All right, going to try this again. Just legged out of a game. First time in ages that's happened to me. Trying to play a live game here on the ladder. So I queued up a Zerg. I'll get a random opponent that's got around the same uh, matchmaking ranking that I have that's around my same level. And we'll play a game once it finds one. It typically takes only a few seconds to find a game. Sometimes it can take about a minute. It took about 30 seconds right there. Let's see who we got. All right, so this is Zerg versus Zerg. So the normal plan here is to make a whole bunch of Zerglings as fast as possible, probably some Banelings. I like to try to get plus one attack and win the game. This map's kind of large, so it can be tough to actually uh, finish the game out with that plan. Sometimes you need to transition to rose Roaches. I'm not the greatest at judging when that is, so we'll see how that goes. First thing I do is make some more drones, but as I make an Overlord, I make some more, but the first thing I do is make a gas once I've done that. Then I make a spawning pool. Because if you try to make an expansion first in this matchup and your opponent is making Zerglings, then it's highly likely you're going to lose. So you just kind of have to play this game where you make Zerglings a lot in the early game. Waiting for the Overlord here. Actually, I made a little bit late. Make some more drones and then gas geyser and a spawning pool. There's a reason I put my spawning pool down where I do, so you can stick a queen here and put it on hold position, and it makes it so the Zerglings can't just run past it, they have to run around the structures to get at your uh, mineral line. As soon as this gas finishes up, I want to have three drones in it. Three drones is how many it takes to mine a gas. You can't overmine gas. With minerals, you can actually uh, go slightly over and still get more returns. So my one here that says out of 16, you can actually have up to 24 drones mining and still be getting an effect. Once you have more than 24, you aren't getting any effect anymore. It's just that the first 16 are getting you the full efficiency. Anything past the 16 is slightly less. I want to make, an over make sure I make an overlord here on 19 supply because that way I don't get supply blocked in a minute. I want to also make my zergling speed upgrade as soon as I have 100 gas. All right, so I'm putting my overlords outside my opponent's base so I can see when they have units leaving. I want to also make a couple zerglings very shortly. Start of the queen so that I'll be able to use the ability to produce more larva. I want to make a baneling nest just for early defense, also possibly early offense. Let's see, I actually want all of these here. Okay, so my opponent did make a hatchery first, so I can actually probably go over there and mess with that a little bit with my zerglings. On the other hand, I could just tech up, since I know my opponent would hatch first, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to send my zerg a couple of zerglings over there to threaten my opponent a little bit, but it's not going to be an actual all-in pressure or anything like that. Start up a queen down here. Actually, I want to make sure I make a Roach Warren shortly so that we can go on to the next stage of the game, which is almost always Roaches here. So, oh yeah, see, my opponent's already got some, got some. So this is actually out of vision of his, but because he saw the, because my opponent's, so your hatchery doesn't actually quite see to the edge of the creep until you make it into a lair. Okay, that's fine. That basically gave me the information I needed. My opponent's playing defensively. We want to both just drone up, play a longer game here. Which probably means I am okay to go take a third base, too. Oops. Don't have enough overlords. Man, the third base is a mile away on this map. Okay. So my plan here is going to be to make roaches the next tier of unit and then make some... Okay, see my opponent's already making evolution chambers which let you get the upgrades for your unit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that too. As long as I'm here, I'll shoo that overlord away too. I'm going to actually take my overlord here so I can spot their overlord. Okay, I want to make a layer because that lets me get the speed upgrade for the roaches which... You really need if you're going to ever att 
pack with them. Queen, you gotta go back on creep. You gotta be over there. You can't just be hanging out over here like this. All right, so I want the attack upgrade first in this matchup because in Roach versus Roach fights, you actually want to make sure that you have enough upgrades to be ahead. And the attack upgrade makes your Roaches take fewer total attacks to defeat their Roaches. I need more drones to actually have this work. So let's make sure to get those. Okay. Okay, so my opponent's also making a third base. They're making theirs a little bit closer together up there, which is fine. All right, so I'll start the Roach Speed Upgrade. I'm connecting this stuff all with creep so that my units can move around. It does, unfortunately, also give my opponent's units the speed bonus. But it's so important for me to be able to move mine defensively that you just have to do it in this matchup. Okay, I think I'm done with the drones now. It's going to be time to just make a bunch of roaches, which means I need a bunch of overlords because roaches use a lot of supply. I should really move this overlord so I can see something better. Let's get the... Okay... All right, maybe we'll make a few more drones just to... All right, so just making roaches to try to go to the next phase of the game here. Haven't seen what my opponent's doing yet. I assume it's something like that because that's what you do in this matchup. Should I just leave that there and see if my opponent's taking this base? Fine. The other thing about roaches is that uh, their their first attack upgrade take, makes them take fewer hits to defeat zerglings. All right, that's all good. Uh, let's shoot this overlord away if we can. Oops, I'm not sure why those guys are there, but I want to make more overlords and then more roaches. I want to make a hydralisk den because they're good to support the roaches with. But it's not strictly necessary. You can also just morph roaches into ravagers and that accomplishes largely the same thing too. Make sure I actually have my clean injects. Let's make all these roaches. Let's leave a few defensive structures here so that they can't just run by with zerglings easily. And then I'm going to go see what is up with my opponent if I can. So what I actually want to do is morph some of these into Ravagers. Oh well, if I had more Vespine. But that's a solvable problem. So I'm getting the second level of upgrades for the roaches. One one and two two are really the big upgrades. Two one's also fine. I'll oh, see my opponent is actually seeing where I'm at here. That's fine. I'm just gonna open up some attack paths for us. There's all my opponent's roaches. What are their upgrades looking like? See they have one attack upgrade where my have two attack up have the attack and the armor upgrade. I just want to be able to move around the map here. I'm also going to make some Zerglings and just blind sun them over there as a counter. I'm going to use the Corrosive Vial to force my opponent's roaches out of position. My opponent right now has the Defender's Advantage, which is that their, their units pop out closer to their base to the fight so they get to the fight faster but i think i have so much stuff and so much better upgrades that this is a good attack for me i'm going to cut off his retreat here i know those corrosive vials look like they're not hitting anything and it's because they're not but the intention is just that my opponent can not okay see my circling's popped out and went over here let's actually get them into the fight so yeah these zerglings i just blind sent out earlier working well 
I actually need to be able to spend more of my resources. Should actually probably make even a macro hatchery here. I think it doesn't matter though, because I think I'm so far ahead that I'm just going to finish the game here. Oh, I don't care about the roach one. I was just trying to attack up the ramp. Suppose says GG and leaves. All right, so let's take a look at what happened there. Can immediately rewind the game when it ends. You're going to see that I've changed colors. When I actually play the game, I play in colorblind mode because, not because I'm colorblind, because it makes it so that my units are always one particular color. My opponent's units are always a particular other color, so I don't have to waste time worrying about whose units are whose. Mine are always the purple ones, theirs are always the orange ones. On the minimap, mine are blue and theirs are orange. So that follows, this follows my camera. You can also go and switch onto their camera. When you do that, it'll switch the colors to have their the stuff be blue, but on the ladder, you always spawn as either red or blue. So my opponent does a little bit of a riskier opening. Like I said, it is a big map, so I can see going hatchery first. The thing is, every time I try to do that, my opponents play max punishment. They do a really fast, what's called a cheese, where you attack right away before your opponent can have defenses up if they did not build a spawning pool very early in the game, and it just kills my base. But since I built a spawning pool at a normal time, my opponent was totally fine to have taken the space. I could have attacked more and put on pressure, but I'm trying to learn how to present transition in the matchup. And since I saw that my opponent wasn't going to attack me anytime soon, I decided we could just play a longer game. Here my gas finishes. I put the three in the gas right away. And I got the spawning pool. So that when the spawning pool is done, I can get the Zergling speed upgrade essentially right away. Send out my drone over here once I've Got that all worked out to take my base. This is just safer, so if my opponent did make a really early spawning pool, I w like a cheesy time spawning pool, I wouldn't just be dead. But my opponent is going to be ahead on workers for a little while because their hatchery is going to go up first here. So we both got our overlords going different places on the map to check out what each other are doing. You normally in Zerg versus Zerg send your first first overlord to see what is up with their natural because you want to see if they have a hatchery up when my overlord gets here i see there's already creep which means that my opponent had to have built their hatchery before any other building because if they had not the there would not be creep yet the hatchery would not be finished see it would be about like this maybe if they skipped gas it would be a little bit more done than that but there would it would not be done with creep as soon as I see that, I turn my overlord around because I don't want my opponent to see that if I can avoid it. They can sort of infer that it's going to be here. This is a high ground that you can't see without a flying unit or, yeah, just a flying unit to let you see up here. So, like, when their queen pops out, they can't just come over here and kill my overlord. See, if you look with my opponent's point of view, you see you can't see it. So there's a queen popping out for my opponent. I talked about it in the game, I decided, okay, well, my opponent just wants to play a longer macro game, I'm happy to do that. That's kind of rare in Zerg versus Zerg. A lot of times you get stuck on Zergling Baneling forever. I did still make my Baneling nest just in case, because sometimes you do this to disguise the fact that you're massing a whole bunch of Zerglings, like, up here. You use your queen to aggressively shoo away overlords, and then you mass up a bunch of Zerglings here, and then run them across the map a little bit later when your opponent thinks, oh, we're just playing a macro game. But I did see there were some Zerglings here, but only a few Zerglings, and the queen came off the ramp and hasn't been out hunting Overlord. So these are all kind of things that told me, oh, my opponent really is just playing a macro game. I also caught that there were like four or five drones here. When doing that build, there's only going to be like maybe two drones down here. My opponent does make some more Zerglings. These are purely for defense. And then possibly to counterattack if I try to take a third, which I think does happen. So my opponent's just making a Roach Warren. I've come to the same conclusion, too, that we're going to have some time to make Roaches, although I haven't started my Warren yet because I want to make sure I get enough drones first. Because the more drones you have, the more uh, you can harvest. Of the resources, and then the more units you'll be able to make. 
I do try to come shoo this Overlord away. I already saw my evolution chambers though, so I don't know that it's really accomplishing very much. My over Overlord is still just chilling out over here. It saw that my opponent was making the evolution chambers themselves. I'm just letting my opponent see everything with their Overlords, not bothering to mess with, have my Queens mess with them or anything. But I have Overlords positioned direct to look at all their stuff basically the same way. So the base here goes down right under my Overlord. My base goes down right under their Overlord. You can see everything going on because the only anti-air you have in the early game here is the Queens. And you really need them to be injecting the Hatchery. Like, see how this Hatchery doesn't have the green balls on it they're supposed to be like that that means it's not being done right you should have those they should fall off and you should immediately put more of them on there to get the right amount of larva this one's okay because it's a new hatchery i think i do walk a queen over here to deal to get it here or start a queen something to actually make it so you can spawn more larva out of this one to then make them into units i saw my opponent was taking a third so i decide that we're just going to Drone up here too. So my opponent did end up getting my overlord that was over here, but that's fine. I do spend too much of this game supply blocked, which is really something I need to work on. Building enough overlords to actually be able to then build more units. Because supply is right here, the number in the top corner. You know, X out of Y. X is how much you have. Y is how many you can have. Every Overlord provides you 8 supply, a Hatchery provides you 6 supply. There's a hard limit of 200 supply that you can have. And there's a few reasons you take fights in this game. Your at max supply is one of them. A key upgrade has just finished is one of them. That your opponent has just taken a base is one of them. So there's, there's different reasons that you would attack. So see here, when my 1-1 one, one finishes, one of the times it makes sense to attack. But I don't actually know very much about what my opponent's got going on, so I just decide I'm going to wait for another set of upgrades, actually. So my opponent does come up here with the Zergling. She ends up, ends up killing the Queen. It's fine. Ideally, if I did this better, I could have had my Roaches rallied down here, maybe, and not lost the Queen. But I had an extra queen here from spreading the creep to connect my bases up for defense anyway. See, my opponent's actually doing a better job. I don't know that you need the creep all the way out here in Zerg versus Zerg. But when you if you do go out on the map and have to retreat, your units will get back to your creep before the opponent's units do. So you'll be able to run away more effectively. But again, it gives the bonus to your units and your enemy units to be on creep. So it's not actually... If you're both on creep, you're fighting at the same speed. It is nice to have the extra vision of the attack path right here, so I actually kind of get why that's there. Have the attack path here, maybe move that up one more once it finishes up. I'd like to see actually maybe more up here so there was more of an attack path up there. And, you know, from my point of view too, I'd like to have mine a little further out there, a little further down this attack path here, more south of my base here, for largely the same reasons, to see spot incoming stuff. So see, I've started 2-2. Two, two. My opponent's just getting their first upgrade now on the armor. My first armor's already done. It's just starting level 2. Uh, I'm ahead on the level 2 attacks, so mine will finish before my opponent's does. If I get over here to try to see what my opponent's army is looking like, you can see if you look in the top there that I have more... If you actually bring it up like... Which one is it? This one? then you can see, okay, we're basically the same number of workers, but I have way more army. So I get over here just to see what's going on since I haven't seen my opponent at all for a while. I take out these destructible rocks so that there's more options for me to circulate around and attack paths. What you want a Zerg when you're engaging the enemy is to have as much surface area as you can to surround them. Because these guys are pretty short range. You see the one standing over here can't even shoot. So I'm like, okay, well, I did I did see the opponent's roach to click on it and see that I was ahead on the upgrades. And oh, hey, my plus two is about to finish. So I think I'll finish during the fight. I should just take this. Before my opponent has a chance to get their plus two attack. Although my plus one, my first armor upgrade actually cancels out their plus one attack. So it does. it's only their second attack upgrade that will matter. 
but it turns out I just have so much stuff that even before my second attack upgrade finishes, I've basically won. I did send out the Zerglings here just as a way to attack from another angle. They're cheap and disposable. I didn't have enough gas to make more roaches, or I would have just done that because they're actually better. But I just was so far ahead here that it didn't matter anyway. So I just stand up here and shoot at the buildings. Hey, I think they, they even canceled an upgrade there, it looks like. Yep. So I'm in the main base, running everything over. At this point, my opponent can't recover. I've just got way too much stuff. Yeah, I've killed all their workers, most of their army, and that's it.